Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Monday, August 16, 2010, and this is a very brief Zero News update. I ran into a couple of problems using the Arduino Pulse Width Modulator Controller on the three horsepower Briggs & Stratton generator test bench that I put together for my runtime test. So unfortunately, I have to go back to using my own constant current Pulse Width Modulator to run the test. Now in this next photo, you'll see that uh, I've put together a fairly comprehensive spreadsheet. We're going to be taking two complete sets of data, one at 3400 RPM and one at 1700 RPM. The next breakdown is zero load, pa zero passive load, 10 amps passive load, and 20 amps passive load with no HHO additional load, 5 amps additional, for HHO generation, 10 amps additional for HHO, 15 and 20 and so on. So you'll see how the how the uh, tests have been broken down. Um, I put this spreadsheet up in its original form at the EBN forum and I allowed my forum members to critique it. They gave me a lot of really fine input. There were a number of things that I've forgotten and uh, one of the things, some of the things that we will be looking for and looking at, at the um, at the data is uh, we're also going to be making sure that we keep a close eye on the voltage at the cell, the temperature of the gasoline fuel going into the gasoline engine. We'll be recording ambient temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity as well uh, during all of these tests, and hopefully uh, we'll factor those into the results. So in total, there will be 300 data points recorded, 10 data points for each particular test that I that I plan to run with the uh, HHO and without it. One of the things that I'm really going to be looking at closely is just how inefficient a four-stroke engine is, which has really been the impetus for my redesigning the four-stroke engine and turning it into a much more efficient two-stroke engine. The reason I say the four-stroke engine is so inefficient is because a lot of energy is wasted on the intake stroke where it's actually creating a vacuum. The crankshaft is, is spinning around and it's pulling down on the piston and creating a vacuum and that's a lot of work. And then when it pushes the piston back up in the compression stroke, that's additional work. And nothing has really been re re recovered from the engine for all that work that we've put in. Then on the second revolution of the crankshaft, you get a power stroke and you get an exhaust stroke. Okay, so you got some of the power back, but there is so much gasoline consumed when the engine is just running without any additional load on the output shaft of the engine. One of the things I'll be looking for is a change in the amount of fuel consumption when I add a load to the output shaft of the engine. I'm guessing that my three horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine is really a five horsepower or thereabouts Briggs & Stratton engine and 40% of the power in the gasoline that's being consumed is only being consumed just to keep the engine running because it is so inefficient. So immediately following the tests that I will be conducting with a unmodified four-stroke engine, be looking for my four-stroke to two-stroke conversion project, whereby I will be taking and firing the spark plug at the top of every piston stroke I'll be opening the intake valve only for about 15 degrees of the crankshaft rotation after top dead center, and I will be feeding it only HHO. The way I will feed it is under pressure, under a variable pressure on the intake manifold. So for the first 15 degrees of the crankshaft rotation, HHO enters the combustion chamber under pressure from the intake manifold, closes. The spark plug will fire at approximately 25 to 30 degrees after top dead center, give you a power stroke all the way to the bottom of, of the crankshaft rotation, and then an exhaust stroke. And some of that exhaust will be recirculated back through the HHO generator cell to be an inert gas that actually creates the explosion rather than an implosion in the combustion chamber for every time that the piston comes around to receive some of the HHO and inert gas mixture. If I achieve the efficiency gains that I expect with this engine modification, ladies and gentlemen, 
we might actually have an engine that runs on 100% water. And that's not a joke, and I'm pretty excited. So be looking for that immediately following these tests, because that is the next project immediately following the um, efficiency test for the unmodified four-stroke engine. That's all for now. Zero Fossil Fuel. Hope you're enjoying the series. I'm really anxious to get back to work. So everybody, take care. Have fun experimenting. Please be safe. Peace.